Oh, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, hopefully you're in the right room. <laughs> We're going to be talking about two GitOps Titans, one powerful solution, um, which is Flamingo, and it lets you use Flux and Argo together. Um, I'm Priyanka Ravi. I also go by Pinky, and I am a platform technology advocate at G Research. And before this, I was a developer experience engineer at Weaveworks and advocated for Flux. I'm a Flux project member and a member of the GitOps, uh, Open GitOps project. Yep. Hey everyone, my name is Joaquin Rodriguez. I'm a senior software engineer at Microsoft. Uh, I'm based in Austin, Texas, and I work directly with customers in basically all things cloud native and uh, you know any, any problem they might have, I'm always around, so. All right, so um, <clears throat> if y'all are new to GitOps, um, I just wanted to run down like what is GitOps. Um, it's an operating model for cloud native applications such as Kubernetes, but I do want to like highlight that it's not just for Kubernetes. Um, if you are doing like a multi-cloud infra, um, you can still use GitOps, but since we're focusing on Argo and Flux and Flamingo in this talk, we're going to be focusing on Kubernetes. Um, and it utilizes a version controlled system most commonly Git as the single source of truth. It becomes like your audit log and everything like that. Um, and it also enables continuous delivery through automated deployment, monitoring, and management by a version controlled system. Um, and it manages your infrastructure and ap applications declaratively. So um, there is a project in the CNCF called the Open GitOps Project. And um, there are a group of people that have come together and like through a set of um, best practices and discussions with different vendors and end users, they've come up with this set of um, GitOps principles. And if you do want to know more about that group or get involved, because we love talking to end users and we love talking to people that are interested in GitOps, you can go to opengitops.dev to learn more about that group. Um, but so I'm just going to go over the principles really fast. So the first one is that a system managed by GitOps must have its desired state expressed declaratively. So everything's written in code, it's reusable, there's an audit trail, all of that. And then the second one is that the desired state is stored in a way that enforces immutability, versioning, and retains a complete version history. So there's no sneaking in a change. Everything's, you know, recorded. Um, and then the third one is that software agents automatically pull the desired state declarations from the source. So this is less about like push, push versus pull model and it's more about like there's something that's listening to your source of truth and um, applying the manifest, like pulling things from there. And then the fourth one is that uh, software agents continuously observe actual system state and attempt to apply the desired state. So beyond just having something that's pulling the, um, you know, the sources, it's actually continuously applying it. And so you get away from things like configuration drift and you know, bad actors. Um, and don't feel like you have to have all of them done in order to use GitOps. Everyone's journey looks really different. And you can start using like GitOps practices. You, know, you can start with a declarative approach and then add in hardening as you go and tweak your setups to meet these guidelines. Um, <clears throat> So what are the benefits of GitOps? Um, there's three value, main value props uh, to GitOps, which are like security, velocity, and reliability. And um, uh, because of GitOps' tools like unique ability to treat everything as code, it creates a direct impact on security. So for example, if all configuration and security policy is treated as code, then everything can be held in version control and then input into um, an automated pipeline. So every change is made, reviewed, and then automated. So there's no manual processes. You're less likely to be at work on a weekend. Um, so it leads to stronger security guarantees, increased developer and operational productivity. It enhances the developer experience because you can focus on things that matter more to you. And then there's improved stability, higher reliability, consistency, and standardization as well. So. You can see two big players in the space. Let's talk about the first one, Argo CD. Um, Argo CD is a really, honestly, both of these tools are great choices. They have, both things have um, pluses and minuses to them. Um, so Argo CD has an application dashboard. It's a really powerful real-time UI dashboard that provides a holistic view of your applications and resources. Um, and then there's a health monitoring and configuration drift detection. It detects, and you can even get notified when applications become unhealthy or for some reason are out of sync. Um, it also does multi-cluster and multi-tenant. 
you can create sandboxes and establish guardrails across multiple clusters or namespaces using a concept in Argo CD called projects. And then you can also do advanced deployment patterns such as like you can support complex pipelines, um, pipeline-like deploys using pre or post sync hooks and sync waves. And then it's also highly extensible. You can customize your resource actions, integrate any config management tooling, and also extend the UI to your needs. Um, it integrates into any environment, so it's really pop-in. Um, it's REST and gRPC API and CLI enables seamless integration with tools. It's really, it's designed to work with like your existing Kubernetes tooling. Um, and then, now let's talk about Flux. So Flux is um, GitOps for apps and infrastructure. The idea is you just push to Git and Flux does the rest. It's declarative, automated, and auditable. Um, it also, so there's another tool that you can use in conjunction with it called Flagger. And Flux and Flagger together deploy apps with canaries, feature flags, and AV rollouts. Um, Flux can also manage any Kubernetes resource. Infrastructure and workload dependency management is also built in. And it can even push back to Git for you with automated container image updates to Git, like image scanning and patching. Um, you can describe the entire desired state of your system in Git. So this includes apps, configuration, dashboards, monitoring, um, and everything else. You basically just use YAML to enforce conformance to the declared system. Um, you don't need to run kube control, which is really nice, so all, because all the changes are synced automatically, so you don't have the issue of like, oh, my versions are different. Um, I don't know if it's only been me, but I'm sure y'all have experienced it too. Um, and you can also, um, uh, everything is controlled through pull requests. So your Git history provides um, a sequence of transactions, so it allows you to recover in any, from any snapshot as well. Um, so it also is designed with security in mind. There's, a, like I mentioned earlier, the pull versus push model, so it's the least amount of privileges because it's pull, and it's an adherence to Kubernetes security policies and tight integration with security tools and best practices. Um, it's multi-cluster, multi-tenancy, and as we like to say, multi-everything. Um, Flux can use one Kubernetes cluster to manage apps in either the same or in other clusters. It can also spin up additional clusters themselves um, and manage clusters including life cycles and fleets. And it works with any Kubernetes and all common tooling. It works with your Git providers like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. You can even use S3 compatible buckets as a source, um, OCI repositories, um, all major container registries, <coughs> and um, all CI workflow providers as well. It also supports um, customized Helm, um, Harbor, custom webhooks, um, other things like RBAC, notifications to Slack, um, other chat systems, policy-driven validation such as OPA, Kyverno, um, and it really just is also built with Kubernetes in mind and what you're already using, so it's also another drop-in tool as well. Um, and like we like to say, dashboards love Flux, so no matter if you're using one of the Flux UIs or a hosted cloud offering from your cloud vendor. Um, Flux has a thriving ecosystem of integrations and products built on top of it, and all have a um, great, they all have great dashboards for you. So, oh, and then lastly too, it's created with Kubernetes controllers, so it's very like lightweight and modular, and you can kind of tailor it to your needs, which is nice. Okay, so now let's talk about Flamingo. Um, Flamingo is the Flux subsystem for Argo, that's what we call it, the FSA. Um, and Flux and Argo, are, as, as I mentioned, are both really popular application deployment tools on Kubernetes with GitOps, but they're very different. They have different workflows and different extensions, um, different weights too. And so with Flamingo, you can actually get the best of both. Um, it's a solution that integrates Flux into Argo CD for a seamless GitOps experience with Kubernetes clusters. So it's a drop-in and non-invasive component for any current Argo CD users to explore today, or if you're using Flux and you want to take advantage of Argo's UI as well. Um, so the way it works is there's a loop, loopback reconciliation, which is a feature of Flamingo that helps to synchronize applications deployed using the GitOps approach. It is activated when the Flux subsystem feature is enabled in the Argo CD user interface. And um, how it works is an Argo CD application um, manifest is created and then deployed to a cluster, either in Kubernetes or in Helm mode. And Joaquin's gonna show you both in his demo. 
Um, and then Flamingo converts the Argo CD application manifest into the equivalent Flux object. Sorry, that's about me. Either a customization object or a Helm release object with a source, depending on the mode used in the Argo CD manifest. If Flux objects already exist for the application, then Flamingo will actually use them as references instead of creating new ones. Flamingo synchronizes or reconciles, as we say, the state of the Argo CD application with its Flux counterparts by using the state of the Flux objects as the desired state. And to do this, the loopback reconciliation mechanism I mentioned bypasses the native reconciliation pro process in Argo CD and relies on flux reconciliation instead. Um, it then uses the result from the flux objects to report back to Argo CD. Loopback reconciliation helps to ensure the reliability and consistency of GitOps-based deployments by keeping the state of applications in sync with their desired state defined in the flux objects. The, te the technique gets its name because it involves looping back to the desired state defined in the flux objects as references to reconcile the state of the application. And um, so why, why even combine Argo and flux? So the reasoning for this is that um, Argo, obviously, like I mentioned, it has a great UI, it's, it's scalable, it has cluster management and centralized control plane, and there's also pre-sync and post-sync validation as well. And Flux has um, Helm release, which, so Flux uses True Helm, the True Helm API to do its deployments, which Argo uses um, like a Helm templating option. So if you're trying to do something like a Helm list or use the Helm CLI to interact with your Helm releases, you won't be able to in Argo, but you would in Flux. So it, if you're really like invested in Helm, that's a that's a nice reason to do it. Also, Flux has um, depends on, which allows you to do um, this app depends on this one and like order the deployments. It has rollback upgrades, dynamic config, Helm values, um, Helm hooks, retries, and then it also has something called the Tofu controller, which if you've heard previously mentioned, it was the the Weave Terraform controller, um, but now it's been renamed to be more vendor agnostic, and um, it allows you to manage your um, Terraform or tofu, open tofu deployments um, through Flux. So now you can do that as a GitOps managed as well. You just have to install it as an additional cluster um, into your, uh, as an additional controller, sorry, as an additional Kubernetes controller in your cluster and where your Flux deployment is living and then it can actually pick those deployments up. And this is cool because now you can manage things outside of Kubernetes as well. You, you know, like whatever you're terraforming, even outside of Kubernetes, you can do with that, this controller. Um, so you basically enjoy a seamless and integrated experience for managing deployments with the automation capabilities of Flux embedded inside the user-friendly interfaces interface of Argo CD. Um, you can take advantage of additional features and capabilities that are not available in either Flux or Argo CD individually, such as, like I mentioned, the robust Helm support from Flux, the Flux OCI repository, um, the Terraform, the, to open, the Tofu controller for infrastructure as code, um, or Argo CD's application set for Flux managed resources as well. So, yeah. Um, and then uh, what's new recently is there is now multi-cluster support as well. And so Flamingo's multi-cluster is a feature designed to visualize and manage multiple Flux clusters in the Flamingo UI. Joaquin's gonna show us that in a second too. And it uses Argo CD cluster secrets to store cluster information for Flamingo's multi-cluster support as well. So now I am going to pass it over to Joaquin. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, so for the demo, we uh, basically structure it in a way that is simple enough that you can try it later at home as a, as a lab. So if you're interested, if you like what you see and you wanna try it later at home, you can go to this GitHub repo or you can scan the QR code and then you can try it later. So let me get started. I'm gonna attempt to do this demo live. Hopefully the demo gods are good to us today. And if not, we have a backup video, but let's, let's try it live. Um, so this is the repo that I was just talking about. I just opened it on my VS code. And I'm gonna start with an architectural diagram just to explain how things are working uh, and how everything gets connected with one another. So we're gonna get started with the management cluster and this management cluster is going to host Flamingo slash Argo 
like Pinky was saying, uh, Flamingo is like an add-on that you can drop in into Argo, and it will, it will allow you to visualize uh, Flux resources across multiple clusters. Um, also, um, we were going to create two clusters. Uh, we're going to call one of them East US2, and the other one is West US2. And this is where we're going to deploy our resources that are managed by Flux. Um, these resources are basically pulled by, or the images get pulled by uh, the OCI repository or the Helm repository, depending on which flavor you're using. And both are going to pull an image from a uh, OCI registry. So essentially, we're going to deploy the same application to two uh, clusters, but it's uh, two different ways of doing it. One of them is using the customized controller, and the other one is using the Helm uh, controller. So the first thing uh, you want to do is uh, you want to set up some prerequisites. Um, for my demo, I'm using uh, AKS, so I'm using the Azure CLI. You don't have to use AKS. You can use any cloud provider of your choice. Uh, I just had to pick one, so I, I picked AKS. But you can use whichever you like. Um, also, you're going to install the Flux CLI, and this is how you install it. And you're going to install the Flamingo CLI, and this is how you do it. Uh, some of these pieces for the demo, I already did it. That way, we don't have to wait too much. So I'm just going to walk you through it really quick. Uh, the first step, um, creating an AKS management cluster, like as I was describing. So you just follow the instructions. The most important thing here is that you have your credentials uh, merge into your kubeconfig. So for the management cluster and for the for both edge clusters, you want to have those into your kubeconfig. That way, the Flamingo CLI can use it a lot easier, I guess. And, uh, and, you, and you'll see why. Um, so next step, we create both edge clusters. And then uh, we're going to set up our kubeconfig to use the management cluster. And then we're going to install Flamingo using the Flamingo CLI. Just Flamingo install. Can you all read that? Do you want me to make it a little bit bigger? Is that OK? OK. OK, so right now it's installing uh, Flamingo. Actually, so it's installing Argo, but it's also installing the Flamingo components that I was describing earlier. So now you can see that um, they are ready. And using the Flamingo CLI, I'm going to get my initial password. Um, later, you can change it, but for purposes of demos, um, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to open a new tab, and I want to run a port forward. That way, I can access my application. OK. I am going to copy my password. And I'm going to, so there you go. So now I've, I'm going to authenticate. And as you can see, this looks just like Argo. It's Argo. Uh, however, you know we have Flamingo installed, so that's why the, the logo changed. Uh, and then the next part, uh, so like I mentioned, we're going to have two edge clusters. And on each cluster, we're going to install the Flux controllers that Pinky was describing. Uh, to do that, I'm going to run Flux Bootstrap. So what it's doing here is I'm installing the, all the Flux controllers into the cluster, but also I'm going to uh, set up some YAML into my repo. That way, every time I change that, YAML is going to synchronize and apply those changes using GitOps into my um, edge clusters. So I just set up a for loop here. Oh, also, you need a GitHub token. I already did that beforehand because I'm not going to give you my GitHub token. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to run that really quick. And you're going to see how each cluster is going to be uh, bootstrapped with, um, with Flux. Doesn't take too long. OK, so now I'm doing the West cluster. It's syncing up. OK, so now if I run git pull, OK, I, I, I did it before here, but I just wanted to show you the steps. So now you can see here I have a folder called clusters, and on each folder I have my edge cluster you know, with my Flux components. OK, so now we have Flux installed in the clusters. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to deploy our applications into each cluster. So. The first approach is to deploy uh, PodInfo application into the East US cluster, and we're going to use the Flux Customize Controller. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to directly apply. Uh, well, I'm going to change the context to use East US, and then I'm going to deploy uh, this YAML. Basically, I'm creating a new namespace. 
I'm setting up uh, an OCI repository that is going to pull from this image with the 6.61 uh, tag, and then I'm going to create the customization so that way the application is, you know, gets, gets installed. So I'm going to copy that. Okay, so now if I run kget pods, you will see that it's running, almost ready. It takes a little while to, to, to be ready, but just give it a second, it's not a big deal. Um, and then the next step, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna deploy the same application into my West cluster, but this time I'm not gonna use the customized controller, I'm gonna use the Helm controller. So again, I'm going to create the namespace. Um, instead of creating an OCI repository, I'm gonna create a Helm repository, and then I'm gonna create my Helm release object. So let me copy that. Okay, so now, give it a few seconds. Yeah, so it's, it's there. So okay, so we have our applications uh, installed in each cluster. So now the next thing is in order for me, or in order for Flamingo to manage each edge cluster, the east and west cluster, we need to register those clusters into Flamingo. That's why I said that it was super important to have those uh, kubeconfig contexts available uh, for Flamingo to use. So I already did that, so I will, let's just do that. Um, I'm going to change my context back to the management cluster, which is Flamingo management. I'm going to run this command called Flamingo list clusters. So you will see right now that I don't have any clusters other than itself registered. And using this for loop, I am going to register the east cluster and the west cluster. Whoops, what did it do now? Okay. All right. So now, if I run Flamingo list clusters, you will see that my two edge clusters are registered. Uh, now, <laughs> the next step is, okay, now we have our clusters registered, so now we're gonna register our apps. So using the Flamingo CLI, there's this command called generate app, and all it does is I'm giving an app name, which you know, we can call it whatever, I call it uh, podinfo ks for uh, customized, east us, and then I'm gonna provide the name of the cluster that it's currently installed, so I know that podinfo ks is installed in the edge dev east us2 cluster. I'm going to look for a customization object called podinfo, and this is in the podinfo customized namespace. And the same thing for uh, the West one, but instead we're using Helm. So I'm going to register them. Okay, now if I run flamingo get a, dash a, you can see that it was successful. I was able to install the Helm uh, release and also that custom I was applied uh, to version 6.6.1 and it seems like it's healthy, so that's good. So now we go back to our Flamingo um, UI and you can see that the two applications in, across the two clusters have been registered. And this is the, the cool thing about Flamingo. So if you open an app that is um, a Flux Manage app, you can see here that we have those um, applications registered and you can see the little flux icon, right? And then basically all the resources that are managed by that customization object are here all the way down to the pod. So from my Flamingo management cluster, I can easily see my logs. And not only that, but I can go back here and I can edit my version two. So let's say if right now I'm running version 6.6.1. I can do an upgrade and click save. So if I go back to my terminal, I'm gonna set the cluster to, sorry, not this one. I'm gonna set my context to, uh, to east. And you see my pod. Uh, let's see, I think I needed to press sync. And this is where the demo gods are not <laughs> helping. I mean, I did the wrong one. I think it, it might have been the deployment, I believe. 
Uh, I think I did the wrong one. Okay, I think it's this one, the image, my bad. Okay. There you go, so now we did the, the upgrade to 6.6.2. Uh, um, and the other one will go away in a little bit. It takes a, a few minutes to synchronize. Yeah, you see, uh, terminating. So that's pretty cool, like you know, having the ability to manage Flux resources from a management cluster using essentially Argo slash Flamingo. Um, and also you can manage the clusters as well. So if I go to settings and clusters, you can see that they are registered and I can even delete them if I want it. Or you can you know, delete the, the apps. Um, likewise, just like I show you that with the custom, uh, customization, if I go into the Helm one, it's the same thing, right? But in this case, we have a Helm repo and you have um, a Helm release. And then again, we can do the same thing. We can modify and, and change things and, and push them as well. Um, or you can have these be synced up in a repo and then have uh, basically always listening on that repo to, to wait for changes and apply true uh, GitOps. Um, and I think that's it for the demo. Um, anything else you want to add, Pinky? Um, um, no, <coughs> okay. I think we're good. Uh, did we have a time? The only thing is, again, if you're interested on this repo, uh, this is the QR code. Um, also, we have some documentation for Flamingo. So this is the, the documentation. Yeah. And of <coughs> course, we opened the, um, the floor for some, for some questions. Yes. Are there any questions? Uh, I think okay. Stacy has the, the mic. Um, OK, yeah. So, uh, historically, I think Flux and Argo have largely been competitors within the same space. Yeah. Do you know how like the discussion originated to like push them together? Uh, yeah, I do actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there was like a history of like they were they, there was an attempt to merge the projects actually at one point um, a little while back, but that did not like it did they did it just didn't take off, so it didn't happen. Um, this was actually not a collaborative attempt for what it's worth. So this was. Um, this was uh, the guy who created the Terraform controller, um, created it kind of like on a whim. And then uh, it got a lot of like reception and people were like, oh, I wish Argo would do this. And then Argo was like, we're not doing this. And so the same guy who created the Terraform controller decided to create this as well um, in collaboration with another person. So Chanwit created it and then Kingdon also like threw in like ideas for it too. And so um, Chanwit just went and created it, like th that was it. Um, I, I think, I don't know how the Argo people feel about it, to be honest, but I think I've, I've heard good, like, I, I think it's, it's cool, because it's still giving, like, you know, recognition to Argo from the Flamingo side as well. I mean, from Black Flux user side, too. So. Yeah, and there's some cases where uh, people might, you know, be really excited about a feature in Argo, like Pinky was saying, but, you know, they're like, oh, man, but we're missing this feature that Flux has. How can we use both? Or, yeah. you know, maybe in some edge, scenarios that you're kind of limited to resources, right? You don't have to install the whole Argo monolith in that edge cluster and just install like a few plus controllers, whichever ones you need, and then be able to use both, but manage it from the management side using Flamingo slash Argo. Basically, I'm not sure they're advertising it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think oh, wait, I think someone else first. Oh, and then. Yeah. Um, so there's a way that you can register apps with Flamingo. Uh, is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yes. Like yes. Flux applica like Flux yeah. managed apps. Yeah. 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 So, um, is there a way to dynamically add um, credentials, um, like for like cube configs, or is that all sort of like manually done? So, okay, for the what I did when I registered the cluster, I used the Flamingo CLI. Mm -hmm. You know, you can also use the like basically like the Argo API to to um, register them, or you can also use the UI, like you know, kind of like what I was showing um, right here. Uh, I think there's a way that you can add a cluster. Um, I don't know where it is. There's a way you can add it. I just don't know why it's not showing here, but, but yeah, but you can you, you can use that. Um, as far as the applications go, I use the Flamingo CLI, but again, there's just nothing more than an Argo application. There's just some syntax that you're injecting. I think you there's like a flag that you put. Like a label. I a think. label, yeah, yeah that is called fl uh, flux <coughs> sus subsystem equals true. Yeah. And that would allow you to visualize the flux resources. 
But essentially, when you register it, it's the same thing as an Argo application. It's an, it's, it is an Argo application. OK, so. And then you can. It's just, um, so it, would it affect your normal workflow with Argo no. at all? No? OK. No, you, you can still add like regular Argo applications, and they work the same way. So uh, on a project that I'm working on, we went down the path. We already had Argo working. Wanted okay. to keep that interface. Mm -hmm. And we went down the path of we want to use TF Controller before it was renamed Tofu Controller. Yeah. Um, actually, because it had advantages over cross-plane in executing Terraform Yeah. Um, from a scalability perspective. But we ran into challenges where it was just overly complicating for teams to have both Flux yeah. with Flamingo in there. So oh, we with actually- Flamingo? Y'all were using Flamingo already? Yeah, we were using Flamingo. Oh, okay. And then nice. we ended, what we ended up doing was we ended up taking Flamingo out Okay. And only using the necessary pieces of Flux to mm. get Tofu Controller to work directly with Argo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've had other instances where people have explored doing that option. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, stuff. I've heard that a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's what we're that's what we're doing. That's what people were doing even before this. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. It's working pretty well, and I'm super happy that Tofu yeah. Controller has a home because it has been a boon to not have to use, um, not ha not have to force an organization to go buy Terraform yeah. Cloud, to then have a managed way of executing yeah. Terraform that's not in a in a pipeline. Yeah, I'm quite sense, fond so. of the Terraform controller, Tofu controller, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And also, I wanted to add, um, Flamingo is still in its early stages, so yeah. I wouldn't say, yeah, use it for production, you know, but there's still a few bugs out there. Uh, but I think, like, you know, like the multi-cluster just got added like a month ago. It's still being maintained, that's true. But it's still being maintained, and there's yeah. like always, you know, pull requests and issues being opened, so. Yeah, it's fairly new, actually, too. It's, I think it only came out last year. Yeah. So. <laughs> So like, I'm impressed that y'all were using it. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank y'all.